Uh, Becky says, how do I talk to my significant other about my debt and the steps I'm taking to get out of it? Now, Travis, I imagine that quite a bit you'll mm. see folks where one person and a couple is really interested. It's the biggest reason for divorce, man. Yeah, that You mentioned sex. that in the documentary, too. Yeah. yeah, like money is the number one reason for divorce. It's a big problem. I, I We had a screening in London uh, a couple of weeks ago, and a, and a young man came up to me almost in tears after watching the oh. film because it triggered for him what was going on in his own relationship. Mm -hmm. And that disconnect between husband and wife or partner and partner, uh, you know, can be very, very difficult to navigate. Um, you know, you gotta take it case by case. One of the things that's been amazing about doing this film is that it's, it's stripping away the taboo around money. Americans, most people in America, I should say, feel a lot of shame around money. Mm. And, this question is very um, sorry. This question, this question is very much around the topic of shame, um, because she doesn't want to. Is a girl? Yeah, it's uh, Becky. Becky. Becky doesn't want to tell her partner that she's in debt. You right, know yeah. that that that's a shameful thing to have to face. So. I don't know. You know, it's funny. Like doing this film, like reminds me of like coming out. Like the the way that uh, a lot of people talk to me about being liberated by this information, mm -hmm. it's as if they've come out of the closet in some way where they're like relinquishing their shame. Yeah, and I th I think it's very liberating, and so I would encourage her to to take the step yeah. because you're gonna know more about yourself, you're gonna know more about your relationship, you're gonna know more about your partner, right? And since it's the person you're living with, apparently, yeah. you wanna know everything you can about that person. Yeah, it, it absolutely. Probably, it probably doesn't need to come up on the first date, you know, if you have- <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky, I have $65,000 worth of student debt. <laughs> right, it, but I also think that it, you can speak about it in a nuanced way as well. You, you can say, hey, part of this is because I made some irresponsible choices with money before and I'm making really good choices with my money now. Here's how I'm making decisions now. Here's how I'm working to pay off the debt. And I think quite often people really respect that. And when I first started dating my wife, um, she was just at the tail end of paying off some student debt. And and for her, you know, that that was a good decision at the time. She actually ended up not needing the 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 degree that she got ultimately from that. But like at the time it was a good decision, a good a good decision for that period of her life. And so some of this debt might be, well, I felt like it was a good decision at the time. But in retrospect, of course, I had a boss once who said hindsight is fifty fifty. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, Jim, Expound. Yeah, Jim Har, one of my favorite people on did, earth. Did he just get uh, uh, he, he idioms wrong? Yeah, or? he mixed up his idiom, but I think it's a more <laughs> profound idiom that way. <laughs> like, like hindsight is fifty fifty. Like, yeah, actually, I made a mistake. I thought it was good, a good decision at the time, but uh, yeah, it's a fifty fifty shot of being right or fifty fifty shot of being wrong. That's great. So, so I think That's that. Great. <laughs> with Becky, there's a responsible way to, to put this forward with someone. Mm -hmm. If they're new in your life, then you know, there, there's a time to, to bring this up. It's before you move in together. It's before you start sharing finances. But there's a way to tackle this, to have the conversations, to set them up for, to set expectations for the relationship. And I think that's important. Here's how I want to spend money. Because if you're setting expectations for someone, what you're saying there is, here's... I plan on living this life together with you. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we're on the same page going forward so we can spend our money responsibly. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a conduit to explore what's valuable for each person in the relationship. Mm. One of the scenes in the documentary does that. They they do a top 10 list. How do they like to, what are the top 10 ways yeah. that they want to spend their time and money? I love how Taylor, when she was like listing out her top 10 things, like none of it really involved money. No. It was great. And, and and most people will find that to be true. You list out your top five favorite things or top 10 favorite things that really make you tick or make you happy. And, and money is is not the number one driver to make those things happen. Yeah, I often think that, that you know, we can't buy happiness, but sometimes we can buy things that augment our life, that enhance our experience of life. And that's ultimately how you can be a good steward of your money is will this serve a purpose, will it bring joy, will it augment, will it enhance, will it amplify my life? If so, and I can afford it, that's another that's another key there is is being able to afford it. And not, not just monetarily, yeah. Yeah, not just the 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 price tag. Yeah, yeah, I could spend a hundred dollars on this widget. 
but can I afford to take care of the thing, water the thing, change the tires on the thing, whatever it is, right?